My name is Chris Ferris, and I'm a professional scooter rider. Past 10 years, I live in uh, Morro Bay, California, right on the coast. I grew up in a Tascadero. I spent a lot of time throughout this area, but this is my home. I've always called it home. After the ISF, I almost got more motivated, and since then I've just trained probably twice as hard and think they've had some help with some really cool trainers and mentors along the way. I've amped things up a lot this year as nothing compared to any of the other years. You know, this, this whole area is where everything started for me. I, I kind of just always had like that competition mindset no matter what I was in. And when I chose young that I wanted to pursue scootering, and not just scootering, but I wanted to pursue a world title in scootering. This is kind of where I started. You know, I was really young, 13 maybe. I'd run here and I'd just start doing laps. And as I would do laps, I'd always tell myself that one day I'm gonna come back as the world champion. So I've known Chris 15 years. When I first met him, he was a little uh, BMX uh, rollerblade guy coming in the door, barely legal to be in the park. If you knew Chris's background, he grew up hucking flips in, on a gymnastics mat from the time he was a kid. He's ridden everything. I mean, he's proficient on a skateboard. He could be pro on a skateboard, frankly. He's been working hard, not just for himself, but for the things he's passionate about since I've known him. and. Obviously, what he's accomplished uh, riding a scooter sets an example based on his faith, based on uh, the lessons that his parents slapped into him, and the fact that he really wants to see success for the kids in the community around him. He's been a go-getter. I mean, he gets right to it. I've only met him twice, and then those short moments that I have met him, it's all business, you know? He's a good kid. Um, he's got lots riding on a... Uh, his future, he's basically taking all of this seriously. And he's at such a young age, if I was that determined at the age of 24, who knows where I'd be today. But hey, that, that's not me, that's him. So um, I can only say good things. From last season, I pretty much just took away that I didn't have big enough tricks to beat the guys that were doing double flares and double backflip combos. So I think the, the, the biggest change this year is gonna be that I'm gonna be doing double flips. Plus I've got a couple of my own tricks as well that I haven't, I haven't used yet. My biggest competitor is Jamie Hole, for sure. Um, he's obviously at the top of the game right now. You know, him and I battle it out every, at every contest. I love Jamie, I think he's a great guy. Nothing negative to say about him, but I definitely see a couple holes in his game, and I'm gonna exploit that this year. Of course, it's just every man for himself, and just do what, uh, do what, you're, do what you're good at and try and do it, do it to the best of your abilities, but I, you also kind of have to take a little bit of a little bit of attention to what the other guys are doing as well, because you know, I mean, we're all trying to win. I'm big on the mental side of things. I think that you win a contest way before you get there. This year is going to be the real deciding factor on, uh, you know, who the real who the real world champion is. don't come into things without a plan and without a clear direction of where I'm going to take it. I try to be as ready and prepared as I possibly can be. I usually don't find myself in a position of trying new tricks before a contest, but while I am here, yes, because this contest specifically is going to be such high level of difficulty and the competitors that I'm going to have to compete against are going to be at such a high level, I will have to start throwing some bigger tricks. I think that Jamie has a lot more of a rider's experience than I do. I think that he gets to ride a lot better skate parks and more frequently than I get to ride them. But I think that my mental state and my physical state is just so, I mean, it's a different league. 
is Jamie my number one competition? I think that he has the potential to be the hardest competitor to beat, but I think that it's going to be between him and Rumet, uh, Jordan Clark, and maybe Esteban Clot. And if Jamie shows up and he's had a good training camp and he's ready to go and he's strong and his mental state's good, then yes, he will be my biggest competition. But if he shows up and he's not ready for it, then I don't think so. It's important to remember that I respect all these people a lot. I mean, it doesn't take anything but strength and determination and a good will and a good spirit to get to where we are. I mean, we're at the top of the game. No one else is at this level. Jamie Hole, myself, Rumet Salik, all I want to do is to find who is the best. And if Jamie's the best, I will take a knee and I will give him the respect. But if I'm the best, then I know that he'll do the same. This isn't about vendetta. This isn't about personal beef. This is just about finding out who the best is.